Awesome. Welcome back, Creatures of the Night, to our next installment of uh, Randy and I's watch-alongs of the Undertaker's Tag Team Championship victories. And we have the first of three Brothers of Destruction victories here today. Uh, April 19th, 2001 edition of SmackDown, where the Brothers of Destruction take on Edge and Christian for the first time. and. Um, yeah, this is the beginning of the final stretch of the Undertaker's tag team victories. So really excited to get into this one because, you know, it sets up everything with Kane and everything, you know, you got the rest of 2001 with the Alliance and the WCW uh, that Undertaker is going to be into with Kane. So this sets it all off here. Yeah, and we are, we're 88 out for this, right? So you've got the bandana uh, going. And uh, I've got the Try Me, I'll Make You Famous t-shirt, which is uh, 2001 vintage. I believe this is only 1XL, so it's at oh. least available. Yes, yes. If you are watching us on YouTube, you can see that we have dressed up for the occasion. Randy, as always, is uh, always a uh, uh, purveyor of Undertaker t-shirts, always shows up in his finest Undertaker t-shirts and uh, for the podcast. And I decided to whip out the best Undertaker style bandana, uh, first of many. Uh, as I was talking to Randy before recording the podcast, I ordered like 10 pairs of bandanas just so that I could be ready for any watch along with Badass Undertaker. So if you're watching on YouTube, get ready for a plethora of colors as we get into the American Badass era. I'm digging the 25th anniversary hoodie too with the yes. Everything that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, thumb holes for the gloves, so it like replicates the entire look here. Um, so yeah, I, I, I had to match. I had to match. You know, the uh, you know, you could be the only one to dress up for these podcasts. I'm the host. I should dress up as well. I forget about the YouTube part of it. I always joke that I'm dressing up for radio, but I forget that oh. there is you. You know, probably you know people <laughs> listen to us. You know, on on way to work or. Uh, going to be having for the holiday weekend for this episode, right. so maybe going out of town. So there probably be more people listening to us than watching us. So this, sure. this week we probably are dressing up for radio. <laughs> nice. Yes. Well, good. They won't know that this is a ridiculously large shirt, and I I don't know what I was thinking when I was twenty. You, you know, if, if you didn't mention it, they probably <laughs> wouldn't know. But since you've mentioned it now, you know now they just have to envision this like XL. Sure. Right. Yeah. Forget everything I've said. It's a medium. It, uh, it's very it's nice. A, very fitting. It's a yeah. <laughs> so, um, before we get into the uh, the match, a little, yeah. you know, I was I was actually watching this entire episode the other day, and um, it is a hilarious episode. How they um how they try and get their tag team uh, championship match in the uh, later on in the evening. This is the episode where they have the segment where the brothers of destruction barge into commissioner Regal's office and sure. they set fire <laughs> to different parts of commissioner Regal's office. And, yeah. you know, William Regal is so underrated as a uh, authority figure, his, his mannerisms, his facial expressions, he really, you know, a perfect side character here to the Birds of Destruction. He's just looking around to each part of his office as it gets set, of, gets set on fire by Kane. And it's just classic. It's just classic. I love uh, this whole episode. I, I watched the whole thing just, you know, for Undertaker involvement, but then also just to kind of refresh myself on what was going on in the Fed at the time. Of course, yes. Uh, there was a lot of really cool stuff in here and I really liked, you know, we'll get into it. I'm sure. I really liked how they, this, for this eight minute tag team title main event, they used, I counted six segments throughout the night to set this up, which okay. I don't, I don't know that you, I don't want to say they never do it anymore. Cause I guess I don't know if that's true, but I, they rarely take the time to do something like that for a main event of SmackDown or Raw six segments. I mean, it, that was awesome. Yeah. And, and, and it starts off the beginning of the program where Undertaker and Kane, you know, because they're just coming off of the Monday Night Raw 
where they save the Hardy Boys from the two-man power trip. And Reed goes out there telling them, you know, not to do that again. And, you know, Kane gets put in the Hardcore Championship match. And, you know, Austin and Triple H cost him his Hardcore title, you know, which leads to the Tag Team Championships later on in the evening. You know, it's uh, just a whole episode just centered around, you know, Undertaker and Kane trying to get some sort of revenge. Right. Yeah, I love that. Um, it was really cool, too, how they set up the uh, Kane injured arm angle, too. So when they did, uh, you know, Commissioner Regal, as you said, calls them out uh, for their actions Monday on Raw. And that looked to me like they were trying to imply that uh, two man power trip were going to flatten Lita with a chair if they didn't get some help soon. And that's when the Brothers of Destruction came out on Raw. So Regal calls them out on SmackDown and admonishes them for getting in the way. And that's when he you know, says, yeah, I'm going to make you put up your hardcore title against Rhino tonight. And then, of course, the two man power trip come out and flatten Kane with a chair and they injure his arm. And that's a that's an injury that he sells the rest of the night, which is awesome. I mean, what yeah. storytelling and psychology. And I mean, I was even taking notes, I'm spoiling it now. But like <laughs> as we get in, as we get into the match, like Kane remembers to kind of not like Bob Dole, like that's his Bob Dole arm. Like, don't use that arm. It's a dead arm. Don't use that arm all night in his matches. He's scoop slamming people with the other arm. And like, man, if I was a performer, I would totally forget. I would totally forget, or I would switch arms accidentally and forget which one is injured. And like Kane was a professional the whole night and, and uh, they, they set up that injury angle and planted the seeds. It was really cool. Yeah. And um, it's something that he sells even to backlash. If I remember, you know, he still has the bandaged arm on the uh, on his arm, like ten, like what, like two weeks later, when in the pay per view, and it's like, wow, it's like they're really they're really milking that whole angle of injuring it here on a SmackDown. Maybe if he wasn't hurt, then the two man power trip wouldn't have won in Chicago. Maybe that's the angle, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. They weren't at full strength. It doesn't count. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But. Um, you know, as it's as and I always love William Regal. It's always Triple H. I always remember Triple oh. H. Yes. Yes, I always remember that. And um, but they if they would the the stipulation is if the Brothers of Destruction defeat Edge and Christian for the tag team championships, they will get a shot at the two man power trip. They didn't specifically say backlash because that's not really mentioned till next week's episode. Little spoiler there, but um, they get they will get their hands on the two man power trip if they are successful tonight. So it's kind of a you know it's kind of a foreshadowing in the episode. It's like mm, you you kind of have a feeling Undertaker and Kane's gonna win. Because, yeah, it was really. Well, go ahead. Yeah, because you know why would they put that? It's like you want Undertaker and Kane to get their hands on. Edge, I mean Edge, Austin and Triple H. So if you know, of course, if they're successful, they're gonna get their hands on them. So it's like, eh, you know, they're gonna kind of be successful. It was nice that they had Triple H and Steve Austin coming in as soon as Regal made that deal with them. You know, because Regal doesn't want to get burned alive, so he makes the deal. Plus, <laughs> you don't want to get burned alive, right? And then Two Man Power Trip, the next segment, they're right in the office saying, what did you do that for? What do you mean they, they get Stone Cold and Triple H if they beat Edge and Christian? What do you mean? And that's when Regal says, I'm going to make this no DQ, this tag team title match with Edge and Christian. Perhaps you could use that to your advantage and they still won't win and they still won't get to you guys. So they kind of plant those seeds that the, you know, the Two Man Power Trip is going to be involved in being no DQ. They'll, they'll find a way to cheat and uh, keep the Brothers of Destruction from, from winning. You know, you know, but as you know, it was the parting words William Regal made to Undertaker, you know, just by the way, this match is no DQ and Undertaker, you know, damn right it is. You know, Undertaker, Undertaker wants it to be no DQ. He wants to use those steel steel stairs on uh, and steel chairs on Edge and Christian. Yeah, did he wants you, everything to his advantage. Did you know, and I don't know, if I probably read way too much into things, but like he started the night in the ring with with commissioner regal he started the night with a dead man ink shirt couple first couple three segments dead man ink and by the end of the night they do the sixth uh, segment is right before the match uh these uh, brothers of destruction are backstage with kevin kelly taker talks about you you were seven time tag team champions 
you've won it seven times, but that means tonight you're going to lose it for a seventh time. And Taker's wearing now, try me, I'll make you famous. And he like changed shirts. So I don't know if he's trying to like sell both of them. Like I'll wear this one for a little while and I'll wear this one. Or is this, I know he said, try me, I'll make you famous before, but I don't remember when this shirt came out. Did this debut tonight? Like, why did he switch it up halfway through the night to wear this shirt? So that's why I wore the shirt to the podcast. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice, nice little tie in right there. I love right. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a, you know, that's just, that just adds to your other question of like him wearing that little loop on his belt when he was a badass, you know, are you ever going to get a right answer to that uh, question? Why did you switch up shirts? Why did you wear that on your belt? I could not figure out. And of course, I wish there was some sort of internet. I mean, you figure somebody would have done it by now. I wish there was an internet resource where you could say, Undertaker 2001, try me, I'll make you famous shirt. And there'd be like a Wikipedia entry on it debuted on this day. He wore it for the first time here. But of course, there's nothing. I couldn't find anything like that. I tried, but I couldn't find anything. I'm like, is this the first night he ever wore this shirt? Why did he switch halfway through the night? I don't know. Probably. Probably was just the thing, you know. Mark, we need you to wear this shirt so you can sell it on Shop Zone. It's all. There you go. Right. Push, uh, push both shirts, you know. Push both shirts. That's I, uh, I did take some. I watched that whole episode. There was a couple other non-Undertaker notes that I made that I thought was interesting that made me smile or laugh. Ooh. Um, Taz, fairly new commentator. Yes. I think he started commentating. I think the, the commentary team got shuffled all together when Jerry Lawler walked out on WWE in February of 01 due to the cat. And so I think he made some sporadic appearances from February 01 through April. So he's fairly new at commentating. I was kind of shocked to hear his voice. I was like this early, but that, that makes sense. Uh, the XFL had their a couple promos for their million dollar game. I saw which that. is like, That's like their Super Bowl, right? And uh so I thought that was interesting because I remember they started their season. I thought they started it in February of 01. And this is April of 01. So you're talking like six weeks later. They're already like <laughs> doing their Super Bowl. Like that's a quick season. I don't remember it being that quick, but apparently it was. Um, WWF The Music Volume 5 had a promo during Eddie Guerrero's entrance. Because his song is on there. And I always remember that CD for... The Rock and Slick Rick singing about Poontang Pie, which I don't think would probably get over in 2021. Rock has a rap where he raps about Poontang Pie for like three and a half minutes. And especially it being an A-list celebrity now, it's kind of like, oh my God, so terrible. Oh my God, Rock. <laughs> but it's out, it's out there. Uh, that, that Immediately when I saw that promo for volume five, that's what I was, uh, I was thinking of. And they did have the... Uh, the Lugs Boot of the week. week. I don't know if you remember Lugs. Oh, the yes, of course. The Lugs Boot of the Week was uh, Linda booting Vince in the Family Jewels at WrestleMania 17. So that was the Lugs uh, Boot of the Week. Yes. Which, and then, which happened like two weeks prior, I think. So it's, right. It wasn't even this week. It was the Lugs Boot of two weeks ago. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> And then the, the weirdest one that I found, and, you, and you'll have to double check me on this, and I, I took a screenshot, I'll have to put it up on my social media or hit you with it. Just, just to, people feel free to verify that I'm not crazy. Okay. So there's the segment with Vince and Shane in the ring, right? Yes, with Big Show. And Vince is, you know, he's convinced, ah, pun intended, he's, Vince is convinced that Shane, obviously he bought WCW for out from under him, Shane's going to start recruiting for the alliance or what's going to be the alliance he's going to start recruiting wwf guys to wcw and he feels like the first one is the big show so he says we're not going to do this all secretive and clandestine i'm going to bring big show out to the ring right now we're going to have it out publicly all three of us so big show comes out you know gets over the climbs over the top rope and he doesn't greet vince but he greets shane to sell the fact that you know him and shane are in cahoots and like the hoots. yeah i can't i can't tell if they're trying to do like the hollywood greeting like where you like do the old double cheek kiss or if they're trying to like maybe like you ever get stuck with somebody doing like between like the hug and the handshake and you don't know which one we're doing you know so you kind of dance a little bit but i swear to god big show and shane kiss on the lips 
like when they're greeting each other, they kiss on the lips. And now there's anything wrong with that. But for these two guys, it's really out of place and weird. And, and like, they never, I'm like, well, maybe like, this is supposed to be like a Hollywood WCW thing, but like, nobody ever did that again. And Michael Cole, like no sells it. He no sells it and says like, oh yeah, big show, uh, big greeting there from Shane McMahon. Like he completely no sells it. Nobody talks about it. And I rewound it like four times and I'm like, are we just like, just going to skate over the fact that I'm pretty sure these guys just kissed on the lips. Like what is going on with that? And like, it was the most bizarre greeting I've ever seen between two wrestlers. Perhaps well, ever. at the end of this, at the end of the uh, record, uh, recording of the match, we will have to go back and watch this segment now to see if you are crazy enough. We just have. Yeah. To- it is. I am ready for you. It is forty-two minutes and twelve seconds. We'll do it later. We will. So anybody wants to double check me at home, 4212, tell me, am I crazy or not? I feel like they were kissing each other on the lips. <laughs> we, I, I, when I started this podcast, I never thought I would go back and check to see if Big Show and Shane McMahon <laughs> kiss on the lips. I was just like, did they just do what I think they did? Like, what the hell was that? And oh, I just kept God. finding it. We'll have to check later, but pretty sure I saw a weird kiss. And then uh, the last note I had was, this is the first show that Regal, uh, William Regal, introduced the term Duchess of Queensbury because he oh. and Jared, they're going to have that match at Backlash, which essentially we're going to make the rules up as we go, nullifying all of Jericho's pinfalls and submissions until Regal gets the win. Like um, a good English heel. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time that he used the words Duchess of Queensbury. And I looked it up. I didn't know that the, the lady who played the Duchess of Queensbury that night at the pay-per-view was Sue Aitchison, who is a like a 30-year behind-the-scenes WWE employee. She has a lot of community outreach. She won the Warrior Award in 2019. So that is your Duchess of Queensbury. You're kidding me. That was her? That's the Duchess of... I'm sure she didn't get the award for being the Duchess of Queensbury, but she did get the Warrior Award in 2019. Wow. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm most shocked that that was not the Duchess of Queensbury. <laughs> <laughs> right you're just putting a whole damper on kayfabe right here yeah because i think regal i found some tweets from regal like three four years ago people asked where is the duchess of queensbury is it sue Aitchison? and william regal uh kayfabe them on twitter and said no she's in a retirement home for old royalty you know in england she's she's in a retirement home i don't know who the sue Aitchison is i don't know who you're talking about so william regal keeping it uh keeping it closed lipped yes yes Unlike Big Show and Shane. We'll check later. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, on that note, let us get started on Undertaker and Kane, the Brothers of Destruction, first reign as tag team champions um, on April 19th, 2001 edition of SmackDown. Um, I am at one hour, 16 minutes and 50 seconds. Okay. So... You all queued up? I am at 46 seconds, so I will hit play, and then I will count you down. How about that? Oh, okay. (laughs) Going a little different here. Ready? So I'm going to hit play in three, two, one, boom. 47, 48, 49, 50. And play. Yep. Perfect. Yes. Edge and Christian. Making their way here to the ring. Interesting that the seven-time tag team champions are coming out first. The, the not, they're not coming out second. The champs are coming out first. They are heels, so they're not coming through the crowd or anything. And they're bringing their friend Rhino with them because it's no DQ. And funny enough, they are seven-time tag team champions, and Undertaker will end up being a seven-time tag team champion. That's right. Eventually, yep. Yes. I, I loved their... Uh, their Charlie's Angels maroon T-shirts they were wearing earlier in the night. I, that's another T-shirt <laughs> I wish I bought. Yeah, it's a, like a parody of Charlie's Angels. Oh, I yeah, wish I would have bought. That. I remember. So I noticed here with Kane and the Undertaker coming out. No Undertaker Kane mashup yet with the music. It's still pretty early. That's right, Kane, and also Kane enters first. You don't have the yeah. brothers together. Got that arm wrapped up like we were talking about. Yeah. 
And also you would notice, I noticed when Kane does the pyro, he only lifts up one arm. Right? Like such a pro. I would have totally blown that and not even thought about it. Just did it, you know, every night for 300 nights a year, I'm doing this. I would have not even thought about it. What a pro. There he is. Summoning yeah. the streets of hell with one arm. <laughs> Undertaker's coming out to Roland. Badass Undertaker was so over, so over with the crowd. Absolutely. And then you see he's wearing the I'll Make You Famous shirt now and he's with your red bandana. Of course. This is why I wore it. <laughs> Had to match the dead man. I didn't even notice the change in T-shirts from earlier on. Yeah, he goes from Dead Man Inc. To, and I don't know, that could be for no reason at all. And they're starting the match without Taker. I mean, I think the plan here is Let's triple team the weak guy, Kane, with the broken arm or whatever, and then we'll try to get the pinfall on him. So they started right away on Kane. Well, you are the T-shirt guy, so it would be, make sense that you would notice that. Yes. <laughs> it is a very red kind of night. Right, with Kane's red, and then Undertaker's got his red and black thing going on. And then you have Edge. Yeah. Kane with single arm clothes lines. He's just leaving that arm, that other arm just drag. That's so awesome. I can't believe he remembered to do that all night. He did a, earlier, he did a one arm side slam. He scooped Christian up and did a one arm side slam. It's amazing. I don't know if I'd be able to remember not to use that arm. Yeah. Funny thing, I know you're talking about video games lately. That uh, Christian mesh shirt right there, that, that my Icon 2000 character I talked about in the last episode, he always had, it was silver, but he always had the Christian mesh shirt. I would just change the color, but that was a staple of mine was the Christian mesh shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm right now I'm going through the SmackDown versus Raw series. Yeah. Yeah, the trilogy, I like it. Then uh, probably after 09, I, you know, just want listening to this commentary today. It reminds me so much of the Just Bring It uh, video sure. game, PS2. It's like that commentary was so bad in that game. But the commentary here between Taz and Cole, it's like so bad, like that game. Right. Just saying all the generic things. Yeah, all the generic things. There we go. Now Taker's getting some shots in on the outside, Christian. Taker, I see, still has the hook on his pants, by the way, for those scoring at home. He is wearing that hook on his pants. I tried. I asked the question. Alex Dorio of Talking Taker prompted me, and I asked the question of the, the bump. I saw, I saw. Well, the, the interview is not over yet. It continues on Wednesday. Oh, does it? Oh, I didn't even get that part. I, I watched the Taker part, and then I cut out. Yeah. He said, they said to continue back here on Wednesday for the rest of our interview. So. Oh, good. Oh. I was so mad because I asked this very creative question and will he remember anything? And then the questions they used were like, what was your favorite Survivor Series moment? Like, come on, ask about the hook. Ask about the hook. And you know what? His answers, I know what his answer would be. He's going to be like, I don't remember doing that. Yeah. There's the hook right there. He's, uh, he's in the corner. I thought you were also going to answer, you know, why did you only bang your, you know, chest twice and hit your leg? I should have done that. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, I was hard to do. that's harder to do over Twitter though. It's harder to a show. I, I did include a screenshot of the, if anybody didn't see the tweet, I did include a, a screenshot of the hook with it circled. So they would know what I'm talking about, but it's, it's hard to show them. Like, I know when you're, when you're a face, why do you do this? And when you're a heel, why do you bang it off your leg? And it's hard to show that on Twitter. Uh, that might be, that might be a $500 question in person at a convention one day. A $500 question in person. Yeah. <laughs> Scaring Earl Hebner, which is Vintage Undertaker. Vintage Undertaker. And as Bruce Pritchard always said, Earl Hebner is always the best referee to scare. Sure. He was good, either good at selling it or he was legitimately terrified. One of the two. I can't tell. <laughs> Could be either one of the two. Sure. But we get, you know, Christian here working that uh, damaged elbow again of Kane, which is the, you know, what people are actually doing in this match. This match is basically, uh, you know, going against Kane's injured elbow. And the strategy wasn't working. It doesn't look like at first until, you know, Kane was kind of holding his own with one arm until I think Rhino gored him. And then that changed oh. the tide. And then now he's been the face in peril ever since. 
Can he lift Christian with one arm? The bad arm, too. Nice. Undertaker is just waiting for that tag, waiting for that hot tag out here. Yeah, he's almost going crazy, like on that uh, internet, uh, that gift. If you ever see I that gift, I was going to mention that. <laughs> you mean the house show going nuts? He's going corner to corner, splashing water on himself. Yeah, yeah he's almost doing like that. Oh, now we're in trouble. Oh, but Hebner didn't see it. He didn't see the tag. Oh, no. And the Boo Birds are out in Nashville. Everybody's booing it. Of course. Heels can get away with that, but not faces. Yeah. That wouldn't have been very much of a storyline if <laughs> Edge and Christian just uh, isolate the injured Kane and then eventually pin him. Ball game. <laughs> isolate the injured Kane. Yeah, just isolate him, pin him. That's it. No pay-per-view. Look at that. And the fans would have been robbed of the Bros of Destruction not facing a two-man power trip. Right. Kane is dominating Edge and Christian with one arm. And make that hot tag. We need we need a healthy Undertaker, and here we go. Here we go. Best pure striker in the game here, cleaning house. Of course. There we go. Michael Cole just said he's cleaning house. Big back body drop, big boot. Undertaker's just like if this is no mercy, he's got a special. Like he's oh, just I know, I know he's got a special already. He's gonna use that that signature taunt. Charter member of Dead Man Inc. That sign in the crowd. Oh, here comes Rhino with the chair. Remember, it's no DQ. Just seems like it's going to be a numbers game with Rhino and Austin and Triple H eventually coming down. You got to feel, and know, then you got like five on two, right? I don't even remember why was Rhino with Edge and Christian. I think that they were uh, they're like Rhino's from Michigan, so like does a lot of like Canadian wrestling. I think he trained and did a lot of like. Canadian wrestling with Edge and Christian, they're actual friends, so they just kind of paired them together, you know. Wow. He was he was their guy, uh, WrestleMania 17. Like oh, each team yeah. had an extra Lita, Spike Dudley, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's like it doesn't go together at all. It's like Lita, Spike Dudley, Rhino. <laughs> this guy that you knew before. Oh, and here's the two man power two trip. Man power trip that and two man power trip don't even bother to go in there and attack the Undertaker. Not even helping out Edge and Christian to attack Undertaker. They're just wiping out Kane. I, I love when Austin had these. Uh, he's taking his belt off there. He's gonna take him to the woodshed here. But uh, I love when Austin had the colored knee braces back then. He had the white ones and the camouflage ones. And oh, oh, oh fail the concerto. Oh, here it goes. A second wind for the Undertaker. Talking Taker always points out that Christian takes the most last rides, and here he is. He takes the best last rides. He does. One, two, new champions. Where they don't get to celebrate. No, they don't. Because here comes for the Triple H. Oh. For the fifth time, a tag team champion. Yep, they are tag team. Uh, he's a tag team champion for the fifth time. And I looked it up. Kane is a tag team champion for the fifth time. So very similar to last month when Undertaker and Rock were both four-time champs. Not yeah. together, but individually. Mm -hmm. First time together, but fifth time for Kane and fifth time for Taker. How weird is that? Funny. Yeah, and that, it, that will continue for the next twice. Because when Undertaker is six, Kane is six. Undertaker yeah. Seven, Kane, seven. Absolutely. It, it, it matches up for the next couple uh, next couple outings here. I 
And I think Austin, like you mentioned, Austin's colored knee braces. Does he only start there when he's a heel? I think so. It was just this like spring summer of 01. I remember King of the Ring. I think he had white ones that I thought were really cool. It's just, it's just in that little time period. We're gonna have, there's the hook way up close. And the tag team titles. Yep. And that sets us up to backlash. That's I'm going to Oh, maybe it's gonna, not going to let me. That sets us yeah. Oh, that's right, though. I forgot to go back for the... I'm totally going to go back just because I'm... I swear to God, I'm not insane. Uh, that was... And Taker and Kane are going to hold that championship for... 10 days until the pay-per-view in Chicago backlash. They're going to lose it to, to Steve and Triple H. Uh, unfortunately, I was really hoping that Taker would win the world title. I didn't think he'd get the Intercontinental, but I was open to it. That'd be awesome. It's something new and different, but uh, held it to the pay-per-view and lost it. And then our next one is going to be on the August 9th, 2001 SmackDown. So we're back to SmackDown. Yes, and we're back to SmackDown. Gonna- yeah, going to be in, what, four, four months' time, so not much will have changed, but they're going to take on the <laughs> National Born Thrillers, Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare for the WCW Tag Team titles. Uh, I can't wait to see that squash match. What's the over-under that that's going to last five minutes? I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't remember. I, I don't know either, but I can't, and like you said, I cannot wait to see that squash match. <laughs> This was eight minutes. This was action packed. They had a lot going on in eight minutes. Oh but, yeah, uh, a lot going on in eight minutes. I don't know what's going to happen with <laughs> when they take on the WCW guys. I don't know. I don't know, but I cannot wait. And hopefully, by the time we get to SummerSlam 2001 um, in two months, hopefully that ringside exclusive is either up for pre-order or in our hands. You know, so that'd be something fun to discuss as well. Yeah, I was, I, I hear, I was thinking, I think we might've talked about it even on the last episode. I'm thinking, okay, then we'll do in December before Christmas, we'll do SummerSlam and then January will be hardcore title. And then I, I ran through it in my notes and I was like, wait a minute, we still have this WCW tag team title win here. So I think that we're, we're clear till February, at least a little bit of time anyway. Yes, we are. Can't yes. skip the WCW tag team titles with the action figure that's wait. coming out. We you know? can't. We absolutely can't. And we cannot. We cannot skip the uh, SmackDown match between the Natural Born Thrillers, Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Palumbo, who would eventually steal the Undertaker's gimmick by riding the motorcycle, eventually with Michelle McCool, conveniently. <laughs> Okay, so where are we at for the Shane McMahon Big Show? This is forty two twelve, and I'm at I'm at forty one thirty right now. Well, I am exact. I am exactly at forty two twelve. Are you really? Yes, exactly. I can't. I just paused it, and I see Big Show's coming into the ring right in front of Shane McMahon. Yeah, I mean, if you watch it at like regular speed, I mean, I, I swear to God, they kiss. And I'm like, I, I watched it two or three times. Okay, I'll go back six seconds. Forty two oh six. Yeah, I'm at I'm at forty. This is, this, is, this is real journalism here, folks. I know, right? This matters, yeah. <laughs> this, this, matters. this is real journalism here. It's more It's more of a, an, am I insane thing? Like it's, so he's coming over the top row, 41, 08, 09, 10, 11. Okay, here we go. They totally kissed. <laughs> I can't wait to put this into my episode description. <laughs> yeah, they do. Right? They do. Let me go back. I can't wait to put this in my episode description. Do Shane McMahon and the Big Show kiss? Just had to find out and listen. <laughs> Run a poll, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. They definitely do. Look at Vince. <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing. I mean, I just, it's so out of character for both of them. It doesn't make any sense, but there it is. There it is. Well, that's hard hitting facts. Uh, Proven here, folks. I'm glad somebody corroborated my thoughts. So oh, not- yes, yes. <laughs> well, we did see um, quite a match. I like you said, very hard hitting. You know, back and forth action. You know, it didn't. It didn't feel like it was only. Would you say eight minutes? 
like eight minutes and some change, but I mean, with the six segments to build this story up, not only for the tag titles and no DQ, so Rhino can be down there and you know, the two man power trips probably going to interfere at the time. Um, but Kane's got a busted arm. They, they established that early. So that way during the match, it's like really versus one and a half team Eck has Rhino Austin triple H versus just undertaker and maybe half a cane. How are they going to get out of this? And then they do get out of this. They win the tag team titles anyway. I mean, that's, it's a pretty cool story uh, before the match and during the match. I really liked it a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm biased, but, but for eight and a half minutes, I thought it was, it had a lot going on. Yeah, I agree. And it's, you know, it doesn't feel like eight minutes. It feels longer because, you know, you have all this action going on and it takes your attention all around the match. You have all the players on the outside of the ring. So, you you know, your attention is like all throughout the match. You know, it's not only on one singular person here because you have Kane being attacked and you have Undertaker on the outside. You have the two-man power trip. You have Rhino. You have all these characters working, you know, against each other. And... It's, it's, a, it's a good match. I enjoy what, it. What a nice way to like, okay, we got to put the tag belts on Undertaker and Kane. But Kane's already got the hardcore belt. Like, how do we fix this? We make him lose it in the beginning of the match. Beginning of the and not, and not only make him lose it, but like tie it into the storyline. Like he lost it because of, you know, Steve Austin and Triple H, everybody, you know, like he lost it because of, of them such brilliance compared to what we may get now yeah <laughs> whereas right now on survivor series 2021 we got a golden egg uh so not exactly the same storytelling the, the brilliance just doesn't stop for miss for vince mcmahon <laughs> it just doesn't stop well i was i was thinking of toys oh hey my favorite my favorite part for 2001 i know you try to tie stuff to toys so I thought of two toys, uh, although I probably shouldn't like blow two of them uh, on this episode, being that the next episode is going to be in four months. Not, not a lot's going to change, but a lot's going to change. But I thought about the um, 2001 Jacks, like the 12 inch, like uh, no, the Ringside Rebels, 12 yes. inch, uh, like Ken doll looking thing. Yes. And is that I, I was doing some scanning on eBay, and you might know more off the top of your head than I would. Is this the only one that has the only Undertaker figure that has him wearing the "Try Me, I'll Make You Famous" shirt? Is this Ken doll twelve incher? Oh. I could. I saw Destruction Inc. I saw. Yeah, they don't put Dead Man Inc. on there. I saw Destruction Inc. I saw a lot of different shirts, but I, I didn't. Yeah, I seen the loved by few, hated by many, respected by all. Yeah, decade of destruction. Um, I don't know that I saw a Try Me I'll Make Me Famous unless it was that 12 inch, or maybe this is too much writing to put on a normal size action figure shirt, too small to fit it on. And maybe on the 12 inch, they could because it's like a Ken doll, but only one I, I found that was wearing the yeah, shirt. I, I believe you're right. Yeah. You are right because the only idea, yeah, because usually he's only in like open shirt vests. Or a trench coat. Sure. Right. He is in the Destruction Inc. shirt. He is in the uh, Respected by All shirt. Yeah, that's the only one he wears. The I'll Make You Famous is the Ken doll. Yes, the Ken doll. So I had to point that out because the theme of the night seems all to come back to yeah. the shirt. So uh, the other one I, I laughed at was the Jax uh, Series 12. The He's wearing the Decade of Destruction shirt. But yeah, I thought it was funny that 2001 Undertaker comes with that smoking skull belt, which is not even a thing Yeah. in 2001. Yeah. There is a variant. He comes with oh. he is, comes with Stone Cold Steve Austin's vest. Really? I didn't know that either. Yeah, that's the one I, I'm looking for that one, actually. Because it's I think it's like a harken to when he takes over Austin's um, locker room. Okay. Once oh, yeah. One episode of SmackDown or Raw. He like yeah. takes over the locker room and he starts wearing his vest and drinking his beers and everything like that. So it's like a nice. variant. Instead of the belt, you get the vest. So that's kind of cool. I'll have to look up that variant just to see it. But I did see the smoking skull belt, which I was like, yeah. this is like, that's like 1998. Why, why is this on a 2001 <laughs> toy? Other than just to, just to get it out there, maybe. But uh, yeah. You know how much that stuff they probably produced. Sure. 
I, uh, but I can't wait to get that. Uh, I did pre-order that uh, Bret Hart Undertaker combo. Yes, yes. I'm thinking, I think it, I think it's a January maybe when we get it. Hopefully sooner, hopefully. I didn't, I didn't order anything else with it to hold it up this time. Good, good, good plan. I'll be excited to get it. I was going to wait just because all we have to go off of right now is the render. You know, they have that, the crude drawing. See, I was thinking like, oh, should I just wait this out? Because, you know, sometimes Amazon gets it, you know, sometimes, you know, Walmart may get it early, like around sure. the same time. It's like, uh, do I want to spend, you know, 28 bucks a piece on this? But then I'm like, I'm horrible in waiting. Sure. I'm horrible. Especially, in especially, especially when Undertaker when stuff. Undertaker. Yeah. I don't want to mess with that at all. So that's I, exactly it. It's like, oh, uh, I mean, I could get this some other way cheaper, but do I really want to wait? I don't. I don't think I have the pirate shirt. I don't think I have a teardrop Undertaker. So I'm like, man, unless this figure looks really bad when it actually is a, in figure form in front of me. And wow. like I say every week, even if I have it on the buried alive segment it's in my it's going to be in my collection someday anyway so i don't you you can bury it that way pun intended you can bury it that way because you can always say hey I, i'm buying this for the podcast i gotta i gotta put out content i gotta buy this to talk about it show right? I, I always put over ringside collectibles <laughs> every week anyway so it's like oh, i gotta give them the business yeah, I don't know what we'll to see. I know you keep your stuff all in the box. Um, how many did you order, by the way, like to make sure that you get them? Uh, uh, I think I ordered four. <laughs> I have to get a good box. Right, right. I um, I don't know if I'll keep Bret Hart. Again, I'll, I'll just have to see it when I when I actually get it, not a render in front of me. Like, do I need the Bret Hart? I could probably sell the Bret Hart for 10 bucks or something. and get. Well, they'll come with an awesome stand, I think. Sure. So and then like the stand, so it's like a match type. So that's kind of cool. But set them up, maybe he's beating up Bret Hart or stomping on him, or who knows? You know, maybe yeah. I can do something. Go for the like choke that. slam. Sure. Yeah. It was fun on I don't know. I think you did see, maybe you didn't see, but it was funny on Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Speaking of Bret Hart, they they gave that free Bret Hart away to my buddy in St. Paul. So that was yes, uh, right. I saw that he won something. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That Survivor Series, Bret Hart, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's controversial face or just doesn't look like him or something like that. But they, uh, I, you know, I think we all kind of retweet once in a while. I tend to only retweet when it's something I want, like The Undertaker, you know, but they gave it to my buddy. They didn't pronounce his name right. Nick Fugatti. That's not his name, but that's fine. Uh, I, I, knew exactly, I knew exactly who that was. I'm like, oh, my God, they they sent it to Nick. That's really cool. So. And I think Nick will keep it. He um, he collects all different guys. He's not like you or I, where it's just one specific person. So he'll probably keep that. So I uh, I got my Undertaker teddy bear from Zack Ryder. So right, it's, it's right. I'm so jealous of that. Yeah. So I uh, I I don't usually read when they're like, oh, we'll give a, we're giving away a you know a Nia Jax. I don't ever retweet that one. But when he oh. said I'm giving away an Undertaker bear, I was like. <laughs> you're right <laughs> oh my gosh i was on top of that so that and i did hear the uh the during that same episode i heard the guys the major wrestling figure podcast guys talking about that wcw tag team champion undertaker which we've got a wcw tag team title match coming up here next month but uh two. we got two coming up can't wait true uh maybe during those two months we'll actually get the figure i don't know when it's on the pipeline for, but like oh, the major wrestling figure podcast guys, they were saying that the reason that the bandana looks so terrible and bulky to them is it's supposed to be a, it's not supposed to be a it's bandana. Be a it's supposed to be a beanie hat. Like the, like the winter hat. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to be like that winter stocking cap with, you know, no poof ball because Undertaker would not wear a poof ball, but, but like the beanie hat. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be. I'm like, Oh, okay. That makes a little more sense. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to have a logo on it. Yeah, and I'm sure, too, if people, uh, you know, it's now, some of the stuff they roll out isn't the final product. So a lot of times of people crap all over a figure and then there's changes. And then when it comes out, it's like, oh, this isn't so bad. So maybe if enough people are complaining about the beanie or there's, there's supposed to be a logo, 
I'm sure they're on top of it now that we've all tweeted about it. So it's like they were with that ultimate cane. Oh, we'll we'll get out the like the pieces uh, and everything. Yeah. So yeah. So you ordered a cane, right? A cane or two? I ordered Did a you? cane. So are they gonna? Is was yours incorrect then, or are they gonna get you? Yeah, you have to contact. I think Mattel customer service, but nice. they'll let you know when they have the pieces in stock. So I'm saying, yeah, why not? Why not take it, right? Oh, yeah, it's free. Free pieces, of course. I've had that. I've never had that with a toy. I've had that with. Um... I'm just think. I was just thinking. Thank God, nothing was wrong with the Undertaker because then in my cycle brain, I have to get yeah, like the pieces. I'll have to get the updated one when they put that out on ringside. I was like, oh my God, thank God, there was something wrong with the Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, you know, because it would be like a variant in your eyes. Oh my, have yes, and I feel so bad for Canaanite 10. He's got to get the, the updated one. He's got to get the pieces in the baggie. And I'm like, thank God I'm not you. <laughs> right, yeah. I've had that with uh, like Blu-ray box sets before where like different companies have said like, hey, um, certain scenes are missing from the movie, you know, like it's supposed to be extended cut or whatever. And th mm -hmm. those scenes were missing. So we sent, uh, we're sending you uh, free replacement discs. And it was something for me. I'm, I'm, I, I got an amateur eye. I would probably never even notice like, oh, that, that eight seconds was chopped out of the movie. I'm pissed, but enough people were. Oh my they gosh. Said, right. I wouldn't even notice that, but they sent, they sent us replacement discs. And so I just kept them with the originals, but I've never had that with a toy before. So that's neat that they're doing that for people. Yeah. Yeah. I just like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad it didn't happen when I take her. I've been so pissed. Like, those are the two uh, takers we got. Those, uh, those two takers and, uh, and me, Mark Callis still, whenever that happens. Yes. The me, Mark Callis looks really good. Yeah. I am ready for that. I'm yes. surprised that I'm surprised that other people are excited about it. Like Zach Ryder, Kurt Hawkins. I mean, all those guys seem really excited about it and positive about it. I thought this would be a niche thing. Like only me and you would be into that, you know, what? but <laughs> uh, I think people are really into it. So that's awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. I really can't wait. That's going to be fun. I'll pay the five extra bucks or whatever it is to make sure that that one comes. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got to order a couple off target. So they ship it in a box. Right. I, uh, I did order, I always get my son one dad gift for Christmas. It's just from dad. A dad gift. One dad gift. And so he's three and a half by then it'll be three and a half. But so, you know, I don't want to get him any figures. Like I don't want to get him anything with small parts. He's not a, he's not somebody that would eat it. And he's not really into that. It's never been him is to eat small parts, but, um, I, uh, I didn't want to buy him like $50 ultimates, you know, $30 ultimates or $25 elites. Like he doesn't need that. He's three, but I thought I'd get him his first three or four basic action figures. Like just, just Ooh. eight, $9 figures that he can bash together. You know I mean? I think he would love it. And I got him the guys that he, you know, kids love winners. And so he kids love winners. Who does he talk about? He talks about Roman Reigns because he thinks The Undertaker is Roman Reigns. Uh, oh, so. my God. That broke my heart a little bit when you tweeted that. I was like, ouch. Yeah, he thought that the ultimate Undertaker was Roman Reigns. Um, it's fine. I made him sleep in the shed for a couple nights. We're fine. We got over it. Right. Um, you are being recorded on a podcast. I am kidding. Don't call child protection. Anybody that's listening. <laughs> um. So I got him Roman Reigns, but it was like a damaged packaging Roman Reigns on ringside. So it was like three bucks because uh, I don't care about the packaging, you know, and I got him uh, Drew McIntyre. He calls him McIntyre. He doesn't know his first name, but he knows McIntyre and he knows uh, Bobby Lashley was his favorite all summer because Bobby Lashley was the champion. Of course, of course, Bobby Lashley. So I got him Bobby Lashley. So they, they were all they were all like nine bucks, eight bucks, three bucks. So. That's, that's going to be his dad gift on Christmas is he'll get his first couple, three uh, action figures just just to smash together and wrestle with. Of course, of course. Then also, so he doesn't touch my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. That's the <laughs> underlying reason, isn't it? Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> right. Don't touch my Undertaker detail if you got your own junk. That you can, Which uh, I keep asking on Twitter for updated photos. You have to show right. updated collection photos of that detail. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know how to pose. It's funny. I don't know how to pose my ultimate. You know, I so I, I right now he's just kind of like in there, like with his hands up. With the I mean, obviously he's got the, the Batman cape on, and he's got his hands up. He's got the hair down, but I don't know how to like pose him. So how about just, um, how about the? Oh, maybe he could do that. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. The cross, and maybe you can I'll... also do the 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 choke slam. So it's like. He's lining up for a choke yeah. slam. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll do that. There you go. Yeah. The very generic, like, he's just in there going like. Yeah, you, get, you get all kinds of ideas here at the Collecting Dead Man podcast. How to pose your figures. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe do the old, uh, yeah. Uh, thumb across the throat. I never thought of that. Maybe I'll do that. Nice. Um, other news. I went to, I did oh. go to AEW oh, Rampage. Yes. yes. Full gear. AEW Rampage and Full Gear, if people who are listening know, was in Minnesota, Randy's home state. So, of course, you would go there. Of course. And did you rep Undertaker merchandise? What did I wear? I think I did. You know, what's funny is that uh, on Rampage, we were fourth row, and I wanted to be seen on, t- on TNT. I wanted to be sure I could see myself when I watched it back. So, I had, like, this bright blue coat and a bright orange hat that I wore like a baseball cap <laughs> and so I think I did wear an Undertaker shirt but I didn't oh, I didn't take God. my coat off at night because I wanted to just like look for that blue and that orange so I could find myself and there is a segment where on the show where uh I think it was Jade Cargill's one year anniversary on in AEW uh she's a women's wrestler on in AEW and Smart Mark Sterling is her manager and so smart Mark Sterling has a cake on a pedestal right in front of us along the aisle way there. And we're fourth row on the aisle way. And, um, they got a cake on a pedestal. that says like happy first year or something like that. And after her match, um, you know, smart Mark is picking up the cake and he's going to present it to Jade Cargill, but oh, he doesn't, I know where this is going. Yeah. He doesn't know that red velvet who is feuding with Jade Cargill right now, red velvet has jumped the guardrail from the other end of the arena and is coming up from behind him to throw the cake in his face. And so during that little cake eater segment, you can, you can see that orange hat plain as day, fourth row behind all the cake action. Uh, I'm in there. So I was wearing an Undertaker shirt, but you couldn't tell. And then, uh, and then the next night was full gear. And the ticket, the pay-per-view ticket fiasco from last uh, yes, year. Yes, the pay-per-view, um, ticket, pay-per-view ticket fiasco of 2021. <laughs> Right. Who had, I don't even know, five, six different sets of seats that he had, he just kept buying seats and like the main, question, the, the main question was he able to sell the other seats? He did sell the other seats. Some of them were at a slight loss, nothing. He didn't take a bath on any of them, but some of them were like ten bucks lower, twenty bucks lower. So all being friends, we all we all covered the gap for him. I mean, he stuck his neck out there for us. Some of that stuff, he couldn't have time to ask us, you know, do you want these seats or not? But he bought seats for like, hey, lower level. Nope, 11th row. Nope, I got us 8th row. Nope, I got us 3rd row. We're just like, how many seats do we have? We're only four people. How much money are you spending? Right. And so he did get rid of them all eventually. Like, I think that maybe a day or two before the event, he got rid of them all. Some, Some of it at a slight loss, but he got rid of them. Then... We get to the day of the show uh, that usually 24 hours in advance, StubHub will like release your tickets to your phone. So you can like distribute them to your people and it's all a barcode now. And it, it didn't do that. And so uh, the morning of the pay-per-view at eight, nine in the morning, he's on the phone with StubHub saying, Hey, I got a pay-per-view in 12 hours and I don't have tickets that I, I paid for these tickets and they haven't dropped. And so StubHub checked into it and apparently just told him like, you know, sometimes this happens, there's nothing they can do about it, except they can give him, I, to my knowledge, they gave him store credit for the value plus 20%, but it was all store credit. It wasn't like a refund of money. Oh my God. So my buddy had to take this store credit plus 20% and immediately go buy new tickets again, because the, the row three tickets didn't drop. And so he, the best he could do this late in the game was third row again. But we were in there. Two of us were on one side of the ring. Two of us were on the other side of the ring. We were going to have to split up. 
And we're like, hey, man, whatever you got to do. And he's like, okay, we're in different sections than we originally were going to be, but we're in the third row still. Okay, cool. So we get to the arena and we're going, we go down to the floor and we walk by our original section on our way. And we walk by, I forget what letter it was, but we walk by our original section and we notice that section did not have free chairs. Oh my God. Oh so my we, God. <laughs> you didn't the, get, oh my God. The original section, it was like a happy accident because the original section that was supposed to, if those tickets would have dropped, we would have paid all that money for third row and got rid of all of our other tickets at a loss for these chairs that would have not happened. They were all plain chairs in that section. So then my buddy and I go sit in one section and the other two buddies go sit on their end of the thing. And we all had chairs. We all got chairs. I feel like we should like pipe in the WWE Hall of Fame music. Dun, 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 dun. I think, you know what, I, I'll look for it. I think I'll add it in. Dun, dun, dun. Like the finally got my chair. Oh my gosh. Oh yes, for the YouTube audience. Yes. Oh, that's great. Gosh, it was worth it. Uh, my wife was maybe the most uh, popular on my Facebook post because I, uh, like, she immediately, fucking chair. well, she immediately commented, where's that going to go? And then everybody was laughing at her reaction. So where is that going to go in our house? Where is that going to go? It's down. It's, I, I keep it folded up and it's in the corner, kind of hidden in the corner behind like a, a bookcase. It's behind, It's in the corner. It's hidden away. And then when I need it, like tonight, I could pull it out. And, of course. Yeah. And I kept all that. It's really cool how they do it. I've never been this close at a pay-per-view before. So they actually, they zip tie them all together. Hmm. So it's all, all, all those chairs are all like one unit zip tied together all night. And then you do have directions where the, where your back goes. There's directions that tell you like, you know, hang loose. You got to get a bracelet and it's one bracelet, one chair. So that way randos can't take your chair. And then they, they do come by. Randos. Yeah. And then at the end of the night, they come through and they, with little clippers, they'll come through and they clip your, uh, your chair free. So that way you can take your actual chair home, the one that you sat in. So it finally ended. All right. And I got my chair. Interesting. Interesting how they do that. Yeah. I never been that close. Before. And then during the, during the street fight with, uh, they had a street fight, a Minneapolis street fight with uh, well, Minneapolis street fight. Which, you know, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it was colder. I don't know. I don't know what, you know, there's a Chicago street fight. You know, the LOD had that, WrestleMania 13, you know. I know yeah. Punk, I think, had a Chicago street fight against Jericho in some pay-per-view. But Minneapolis yeah, this, street fight, you know, it's it's rougher. It's rougher Minneapolis. Yeah, colder. It was uh, Jericho's inner circle group going up against the America's top team, which is a bunch of UFC guys with Dan Lambert and... Uh, men of the year tag team with Ethan page and Scorpio sky. And there's like, it's like four on four and it's just like chaos everywhere. They're all splitting off and they got chairs and toys and they're hitting each other. And the really cool thing was, is during that match, um, we felt like there was a couple independent wrestlers that were sat in front of us yeah, before, before the entrances. It's almost like they were supposed to catch somebody. Like we kind of felt like something was going to go down. And sure enough, during the match, uh, Santana of the Inner Circle and Ethan Page of Men of the Year were fighting out near us. He throws Ethan Page into the second and third row, which is right in front of us. And then, uh, and then Santana's like, move. He said, move. I think he yelled move a couple of times before he ran the length of the ring and then dove over the barricade into Ethan Page and in, into us, basically. And uh, he yelled, move as if we could go anywhere. All of our chairs are zip tied together. Like we can't go anywhere, but he yelled, move, move. And then he just dove at us and it just destroyed the whole area. All the chairs were coming apart. Like the zip ties were breaking and stuff. And so I took, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you saw it or not, but I took a, I took a selfie with dead Ethan Page because Ethan Page is laying there all like dead. And then <laughs> I did see, that. I remember they had dead Ethan Page. Got me in the corner, like taking a selfie with dead Ethan Page behind me. It was awesome. <laughs> what a moment. That's what you pay, you know, a couple hundred bucks for to get that chair and sit that close. You know, now I worry about, we said we were only doing it for Minneapolis because we're not traveling. There's no yep. hotel. We're not driving. 
now I worry that we're going to be chair snobs because now you're going to be chair snobs. How do we go back to sitting in the upper deck in Chicago or St. Louis or something, you know? Oh man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You can't, you can't, you have to get, you have to get the, uh, that exclusive chair every time you want to go to a pay-per-view now. Oh my gosh. And I see if I get one chair, like fine. Even if I get another chair in a couple of years, fine. But if I start bringing home chairs after every show, my wife is going to kill me. <laughs> they stack. They stack nicely. <laughs> they, I mean, although I will say if, if I ever wanted to, they on eBay, if you ever search like WWE Survivor Series 2021 chair, I mean, it's like 300 bucks, 325 bucks, 250 bucks. I'm like, you got to ship, are... ship that sucker. Yeah, it's like seven, probably 75 bucks to ship, I would guess. But yeah, I mean, it's like 300 bucks and people are paying for it, you know? Oh. I, I saw on the way out, people were by the door uh, of the Target honking, Center. Were they honking their chairs? Yep, they were like, you know, 100 bucks, 150 bucks, but you got to have cash, obviously. And, and who uh, carries I already cash? Have... Who carries cash? You don't want to get robbed. <laughs> and it brings us all full circle here, doesn't it? <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what we'll get for a. It was a pretty good year going to the CM Punk Rampage, and then getting a chair at a pay per view in Minneapolis. Uh, I don't know what we'll get for AEW next year. I'm maybe a Dynamite. We have, I've never oh. been to a. Dy- so if Minneapolis could get Dynamite next summer or something, that'd be good. And then uh, maybe I'll get a chance to go to their WrestleMania is all out in Chicago every, every September. Couldn't go this year because my wife had a, a wedding on that same weekend. I remember. So maybe she won't have a wedding this time. Maybe we can go to All Out and I can hit that up in Chicago. That'd be a pretty good year to go to a Dynamite and an All Out. That'd be nice. Yeah. And then we could talk about it again on the podcast. Absolutely. Definitely. Hopefully add me. We'll add another chair. We'll see. You got to add another chair. You can't go there and not get another chair. I told my buddy, I was like, man, if all these tickets, if this thing doesn't work out and we end up watching the pay-per-view at your house, because for a while he's like, dude, the tickets aren't dropping. I don't know if we're going to the pay-per-view. And I'm like, I will go to your house and watch the pay-per-view and I will take home your couch. Like I am leaving with a chair. I will take home your couch. I am leaving with a chair one way or another on Saturday. And, uh, and thankfully it happened. And like I said, the original tickets didn't have chairs. I got lucky. There's a reason for everything, as I always say. You wanted yep. a chair. You wanted a chair. You got the chair. The original tickets wouldn't have had the chair. Now you got your chair. So like, like stuff, I gotta I gotta have it. I gotta keep it. And that way when I'm gone, my son can throw it out. <laughs> it's the vicious cycle of us collectors, you know. When right. we're gone, it'll just be tossed out. You know, I think I think Kurt Hawkins and uh, and uh, Matt Cardona talked about one time, maybe when they get older, 70s or 80 years old, maybe they'll consider selling their collection off. So they know that it's going somewhere loved, I guess, and and valued. Uh, I don't know that I could do that even at 70. Maybe you change your tune at 70, but uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know that I could do that. I'll probably just die with it. And then, and then my son can throw it out. (laughs) It's his problem now. It's like my, my dad with all of his hunting weapons and my dad's a big hunter. And I'm like, what am I going to do with all that crap? Like, I'm, just pretty much going to throw it out immediately. <laughs> wow. Wow. Breaking his heart. You're breaking his heart. Good thing dad doesn't listen to podcasts. We're okay. No, listen to this one. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything else on your notes that you want to get to before we wrap up the episode? I don't think so. Uh, big show and uh, Shane kissing. No, that, that was the that was the major climax of this episode. We went through the toys. We went through my AEW weekend. I think that was it. Amazing. All the build up for the match. Amazing. And you know how can you how can you even come back from Big Show and Shane McMahon kissing? You know, that's the climax. That's what I, I think. I think that's going to be like the the, the uh, mini title of the episode. It you has, know, it has that's to gonna be in that's going to be in my description too, in my tweet. Wow. You know, it's going to be. <laughs> it has to be. It has to be in my episode description, and you know, there's there's no coming back from that. 
There isn't. But we had we were treated to an amazing uh, SmackDown match again. I love doing these SmackDown and Raw matches because you know they're just fun. They keep your attention for like eight to ten minutes, um, and you just get like great back and forth hardcore action. And uh, are you still talking about Big Show and Shane? Or no, we're not talking it? about Big Show and Shane McMahon. <laughs> um, but I, I like watching these, like you said, the SmackDowns and the Raws. I really like watching the whole episode too, because even if it doesn't have, I mean, I really like the six segments with the Undertaker, but even if it doesn't have anything to do with him, it's really cool to be like, oh yeah, that's what was going on at the time. Oh yeah. yeah. So I already can't wait for the August 9th SmackDown, August 9th, 2001. Yes, we'll probably see a relative squash with the uh, natural born thrillers, but what else is involved in that episode uh, that I, we don't even remember right now? I think that's, that's really neat. I can't wait for that. Yeah. And we of Undertaker's seven title victories, four of them happen on a Raw or a SmackDown. Only yeah. three happen at a pay per view, which is which is very interesting. You don't think of tag titles or titles in general changing hands on a Raw or SmackDown. Gosh, I think we went through it the first title reign, but like uh, eighteen days is the longest one, and then he had a thirteen day or in there somewhere, I think, and then this is the third longest one at ten days, like. They were all relatively short for him. Uh, yeah. He was it usually was a means to an end. It wasn't, you know, he was always a better chaser, I think. Um, of course. I, yeah. you know, it's always nice to pad the resume. I did see a really cool factoid on Twitter because uh, that's where I get all my information. Um, but I did see a really good factoid that the Undertaker only won the tag team titles with fellow world champions. I thought, oh, yeah, I never thought of it that way before. Like that he is, never, yeah, he never won the tag team titles with, you know, a Rikishi or somebody like that, you know, or obviously uh, somebody that didn't make it to being world champion. If they hadn't been world champion already, they were going to be world champion eventually. Yeah. But he, he won tag team titles with all world champions. I thought, oh yeah, I never, I've never thought of it that way, but that's true. Yeah, it is true. That is something, yeah. That's See? an interesting factoid. You hang in till the end. You might get a you might get a little nugget like that. So, yes, thanks to now. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe our December edition is going to be Undertaker and Kane versus Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare. Can't wait, man. That's can't uh, I can't I can't believe that's going to be our December holiday edition. Yeah, we'll have to spend a lot of time. We'll have to have filler. We'll have to talk about Christmas or something. Yes, we have to add plenty of filler. <laughs> <laughs> to under because uh that is our next installment of taking a look back at the undertaker's tag team championship victories uh undertaker and kane taking on the natural born thrillers which is what quite a name in itself of uh, chuck right. colombo and sean o'hare but then we get the cage match in january we get the hardcore title in february and see where it goes from there I loved, we'll have to talk about it as we get closer, but I mm-hmm. loved, I was listening to your Friday episode Saturday, I think in the car. And um, you were talking about, Hey, maybe we'll talk about hell in a cells or something. And I thought maybe that the gimmick matches or something like that. And I thought maybe we will go through all of this hell in the cells, like every single hell in the cell. Yeah. Gimmick casket matches, buried alive. I'm up for anything. We will be doing this until we are very old men. We will be. And I, I enjoy it. I look forward to it. Me too, man. Me too. I love it. Yeah. And um, so we'll keep in touch as we always do on Twitter. And until next time, with same taker time, same taker channel, we keep on rolling, baby. Thank you again, Randy. It's always fun. No problem. Thank you. Awesome. Until next month. See you later. <laughs>